may begin. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here, and I'm excited because I think we're going to learn a lot today about various topics. So here we go. I have found a common trend in life society where things, as time progresses, things become more advanced. You know, there's always something bigger, something better. I can always count on a new iPhone releasing every year that is bigger and better than the previous years. But what if I told you that there's a time in history when instead of moving forward, we took a step backward and simplified things. I'm talking about minimalism, minimalism in music specifically. Now, I've studied music for almost my whole life, and I think minimalism is extremely unique because of its, uh, because of its uh, unique characteristics in music history and how different it is from everything else that preceded it. Now, most people haven't heard of musical minimalism before, and if they have, they aren't sure exactly what it is, just maybe something simpler. So, with that being said, I think minimalism is one of the most important parts of 20th century music history. It cuts ties with the past, putting aside complexity in favor of simplicity. By the end of my presentation, you'll have learned what minimalism is exactly, its musical characteristics, and the key composers, as well as some of their most famous works. Now, according to the Grove Music Online article on minimalism by Keith Potter, last updated on December 30th, 2019, minimalism is defined as a term borrowed from the visual arts to describe a style of composition characterized by an intentionally simplified rhythmic, melodic, and harmonic vocabulary. Now those three things are very important, and we'll talk about them later when I talk about the characteristics of minimalism. But for now, let's talk about where it came from. Minimalism has some roots with the French music of Eric Satie, particularly his piece of music called Vexations. Now, Stephen Whiting talks about Satie's Vexations in his article from the Archive for Musicology, titled Serious Immob Immobilities, Musings on Satie's Vexations, published in 2010. He points to Vexations as the harbinger for avant-garde ahead of the, the group music. As brief two lines of music is repeated a monumental 840 times. Now, despite this trace back to 1893, minimalism is wholly an American uh, invention, I guess, from the 1960s and the 1970s. It was primarily a reaction to modernism, another movement in music history at the time, where music was pushed to its limits, both rhythmically, harmonically, and um, with meaning pushed to its limits. It was complex, and it was very difficult to listen to, to anyone who, was, who had an untrained ear. Minimalism detested that and tried to reel it back in to something more simple and easy to understand. Now, minimalism gets its name from an art movement that occurred around the same time in American art history where in art history, a single blank canvas or a canvas with just one color was just that, a blank canvas. It had no extra meaning, no ulterior motive. And in music, minimalist music, it was the same thing. A piece of music where they, the piano just plays the note C over and over is just that, nothing more. So now that we know what minimalism is, I'd like to talk about some of its key characteristics. I talked before about the definition, let's talk about simplified harmony. No more dense harmonic figures. There's lots of chords in, in uh, modernist music that don't make sense and they don't sound good. So there's no more of the dense harmony in minimalism. It's simple and repetitive and it's not the focus. The rhythms are also simplified. There's no more complex rhythms that sound kind of bonkers. It's very simple, repetitive, and there's a word we use for that in music called an ostinato. It's a repeated musical phrase or pattern. This is the key part of minimalism. There's a reliance on rhythm and meter, not so much melody. And then there's also a reduced abstraction, which essentially means there's an absence of meaning in minimalist music. Usually in music history, uh, in music history there's been a precedence of music having some extra musical meaning behind it. Um, there's motives that have meaning, but in minimalism, there's nothing that. The music is just there to be music. 
Now, I want to expand on these characteristics with examples of minimalist composers and their works. According to Timothy Johnson's article, Minimalism, Aesthetic, Style, or Technique, from volume 78 of the musical Quarterly, published in 1994, there are four important composers at the forefront of minimalism. Terry Riley, Lamont Young, Steve Reich, and Philip Glass. Now, before we talk about those four, I'd like to briefly touch on one important composer, John Cage. We may have heard of John Cage before, and his most infamous work, 433, which the keen-eared listeners in the audience might have noticed we've been listening to this entire time. That's right, it's four minutes and 33 seconds of complete silence. This is, honestly, one of the first truly minimal pieces of music, because there's nothing there. Devoid of meaning, the music is just the absence of sound there. So, it was composed in 1952, before the start of minimalist music in the 1960s and 70s, but it brought together a new school of thought. Let's talk about Terry Riley. He was born in June of 1935 in California. He studied at UC Berkeley, and his piece of music in C has a repeated piano note the entire time and many ostinatos. So let's listen to that briefly. goes on for 40 minutes. <laughs> it's 40 minutes of a piano player playing the same C over and over again with these other ostinatos. Remember the rhythmic patterns repeating over top of it. Now, not only, uh, less than a year later, Lamont Young was born, October of 1935. He was born in Idaho and studied in California. He moved to New York City in 1960 and was a member of Fluxus, a group of composers that focused on avant-garde music. His piece of music, con Composition 1960, number seven, sim uh, simplified, um, at simplified harmony and rhythms to just something interesting, creating this unique harmonic blend of sounds where there was no melody, it was just a unique sound that he liked. Let's give it a listen. So this is a shorter piece, around six minutes, but it's around. It's mostly just that. Notes keep adding on to each other. There's no melody, and the harmony takes a back seat. So we just hear these lovely, these lovely notes interacting with each other. Our second to last composer is Steve Reich. He was born in October of 1936, based in both New York City and Los Angeles, California. He focused on music uh, that was called phase shifting, where you take that repeated uh, rhythmic function and slowly change it over time. Here's his music for 18 musicians, a section of it. Try to listen for that rhythm changing slowly over time. Philip Glass, born in January of 1937, studied at Juilliard with Steve Reich, and his string quartet number no. three, Mishima, from the movie Mishima, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters by Paul Schrader, has more harmony, but it's repeated over and over, so it keeps the aesthetic style of minimalism intact. Let's listen. Some brief snippets of important composers in their music. Now, th 
through learning what minimalism is, what it sounds like, and who it was that pioneered this style, I hope you've come to understand the significance of this unique part of music history. I think, ultimately, minimalism encapsulates the ideals of counterculture in the 1960s and 1970s, rebelling against the norm and joining hands with something unique and, you know, against uh, what was popular. And I think minimalism ultimately teaches us that it's okay to step back and simplify things because there's beauty in life where there's less complexity. Thank you. <laughs>